Lexi Underwood plays Pearl Warren on the Hulu limited series Little Fires Everywhere. I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby here with Lexi. And first of all, I wanted to ask you, you play the daughter of Mia, played by Kerry Washington. And not only do you kind of resemble her in the show, but you also have kind of some of the same mannerisms even. So I was curious how intentional was that on your part to try and act like Carrie because you really do seem like mother and daughter. Thank you. Um, it was very intentional actually. Um, for months I studied um, Miss Carrie's work so I was watching Scandal religiously or just uh, honestly anything that she's done. Uh, Save the Last Dance. I just went back and I actually looked myself in the mirror and I tried to nail down her, her mannerisms like to a T um, because you know they're I mean not necessarily like all the mannerisms are going to be the same but you know when you are mother and daughter and especially because you know me and pearl like they're really they like they're really really close so I, I felt as though you know she would have a lot of the same mannerisms as mia so i looked myself in the mirror and i would just practice and study her mannerisms over and over again until i felt you know comfortable with it yeah well, you certainly did a great job on that part. Um, so how did you actually end up getting involved with Little Fires Everywhere in the first place? Did you read the book? Yeah. Um, so I found out about Little Fires Everywhere about a year prior to the audition process. A friend of mine was like, they just came out with a deadline article, and basically they're making a TV adaptation of Little Fires Everywhere with Kerry Washington and Reese Witherspoon. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. But I hadn't read the book yet. And they were like, you'd be perfect for Pearl. And so I was like, okay. Um, so I put it in my notes on my phone to make sure that I auditioned for Pearl. And about a year later, I auditioned, but the day before my audition for Little Fires Everywhere, I actually lost a pilot and I was absolutely devastated. I was ready to go home. Um, I didn't even want to do my audition for Little Fires, but my mom picked me up off the ground and she was like, just go in there and show them what you got. Um, and if you, you know, don't book it and you still want to quit acting, that's fine. But at least, you know, go in there and come out knowing that you gave it your all. Um, so I did. And I auditioned on a Friday. I had my second audition on a Tuesday and that's right after I, um, I decided to purchase the book because I was saying, you know, okay, so if I book it, at least I get to start preparing early. Um, if I don't book it, at least I get to read a really good book that I've been wanting to read. So I started reading it. I, I want to say I finished it in a day. Um, I remember I was actually filming Criminal Minds at the time, and I was like on set and I was like just reading the book over and over again and everybody was like, oh my gosh, like we we love this book. And actually some of the ADs from Criminal Minds actually worked on Little Fires. So it was like a, it was like a, a crazy circle moment, but then I booked it in like the span of a week and um, we didn't start until the end of May. So I was prepping from the beginning of April to the end of May, um, but it was an incredible journey. Wow. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, Pearl is such a fascinating character because it's like clearly she wants a more stable life and yeah. she finds some comfort in this, the Richardson family, but she yeah. still has a very strong relationship with her mother, even though the two of them, Mia and Elena, are very often at odds and that relationship just gets worse and worse as it goes on. <laughs> so can you talk about just balancing those relationships those dynamics that she has with her mother but also with elena yeah um well something that really helped me when it comes to understanding those relationships was i made venn diagrams um, for pearl with all the characters firstly i started off with a venn diagram between me and pearl um, to figure out the similarities and the differences um, i did a lot of um, annotations when it came to the book so that i could you know really stay true to this character that's less in rote but then also add you know my twist to it um, but i created venn diagrams when it came to mia and pearl when it came to lane and pearl um, Lexi and Pearl, like just a bunch of these different characters so that I could really understand the dynamics and why Pearl was so um, drawn to and attracted to these characters and why she made the choices that she did um, along the series. And so basically, I think 
Well, for me and Pearl, it's very simple. They're mother and daughter. They have been moving around Pearl's entire life. In all honesty, Pearl has been dragged around. Um, and while Mia does care for her, just like Elena says to Izzy that it's hard for Elena to be her mother, it's hard for Pearl to be Mia's daughter. Um, I mean, just imagine, you know, sometimes people do come after Pearl for immediately going to Elena and people accuse Pearl sometimes of, you know, trying to be white and just like getting so caught up in, you know, I, I, this white privilege that they stand for. But I honestly think that at the end of, at the end of the day, they just stand for this life that Pearl has always craved for just this normal, all American teenage life. That's it. Just this surface life. That's all she's ever wanted. Just to live in a house, just to have a stable life, just to have, you know, a mom that fends for her, a mom that cares for her, to know where she comes from, to know, you know, who her dad is. She wants to have friends. She wants to have a boyfriend, even if it isn't who the audience wants it you know, wants her to be with, it's, it's somebody that she truly loves. And so when she goes to Elena in those times of, you know, need, it's not necessarily her wanting to be white. It's her just wanting to have, it's just her wanting to have support and have a mother that holds her and tells her that it's going to be okay. Um, because in all honesty, when Izzy does that with Mia, nobody says that Izzy's trying to be black. Everybody just says, oh, it's, Izzy's just coming to, to Mia for support because her mom isn't giving her that. But it's the same thing with Pearl. I think it's just because the way that Elena is. And also, I think sometimes the fact that, you know, society sees when society sees a young black girl running to a wealthy white woman, we immediately assume that she's trying to be white and she's trying to, uh, you know, be, I don't know, just kind of live that life, you know, just be like, spoiled, wealthy, um, just fall along with everything that they stand for. But that's not necessarily it. At the end of the day, she just wants support and she wants love. And she's not getting that from me in that moment. Right, right. And I think one reason why people resonated so much with Pearl is those struggles with identity and finding her place in the world and trying to figure out her history. Mm -hmm. So how much did you pull from your own life in, in order to really find your way into this character? Um, I think that, you know, no matter where you're from, what race you are, what age you are, um, what language you speak, I think that anybody can resonate with one of these characters, um, especially teenagers. When it comes to the struggle of trying to find your place in the world and not necessarily knowing who you are and also kind of living in the shadow of, of your mom and just trying to figure out who you are because you know your whole life your mom has told you that this is who you are and this is how you're supposed to live and this is how you're supposed to act um so i think that it's an identity struggle with all the kids in all honesty i think that everybody's just trying to find their place in the midst of chaos in the midst of you know these two mothers also kind of try if you think about it me and elaine are also trying to find themselves and trying to figure out their way of um, going about with when it comes to mothering. Um, so I think that all of these characters are struggling with identity issues. And I think that, you know, for Pearl, um, there are just a lot of things that I could draw from when it comes to not necessarily knowing who you are and trying to figure out where you belong and trying to figure out what group to hang out with at school and what boy to like and, you know, what, what class to be in, just all those different things. And so I think that, you know, it wasn't necessarily hard for me when it came to understanding that side of Pearl. Mm -hmm. Well, can you tell us a little more about just working with Carrie Washington and, and also Reese Witherspoon, these two like A-list actresses that have been in the business for so long? What, what, what did they give you on set? Um, it was an absolute dream come true working with them. Um, just the, like, words can't even describe it. I'm trying to think that, you know, those two ladies are the true definition of grace and class. Um, seeing them as bosses, incredible producers, fantastic actors and scene partners, wives and mothers and, and friends it, it was truly inspiring just to see how they juggle it all um they both taught me 
that they both taught me how to unapologetically take up space. And I've, I've heard some of my other, you know, fellow co-stars echo the same sentence after I said it, but it's it's so true. We learned how to unapologetically take up space. And for me, as a Black artist in the industry, especially, that meant the world to me, coming to a set and being able to unapologetically be myself and unapologetically be a creative and not be afraid to um, step up to the table with my own ideas. And if something did not feel right, um, to speak up and say it, because at the end of the day, I'm the one that's playing Pearl. And if something written down on the page doesn't seem authentic to the story and to what Pearl would do, then to not be afraid to speak up and say something about it. Um, so yeah, the I mean, just working with them was an absolute dream come true. And something that I admire about both of them was that they're both incredibly giving scene partners and they're selfless actors. And it's hard to find those type of actors, especially when they've been in the game for so long. So it was truly an honor to work with them. Wow. It sounds like this was really more than just like a role for you. This was like almost life changing in, in some ways. Um, well, you also have some great scenes with all the Richardson kids. And I think there's this natural chemistry there that feels like there must have been like a bonding process on set. Did that just develop naturally or did you really have to put in the work to, to make it work? No, I, I mean, it definitely developed naturally, but then we also definitely went out and did things together as a cast, mm -hmm. Disneyland twice. Um, we would hang out on set, we went bowling, um, we went out to dinner multiple times, Halloween Horror Nights, like we did just so many fun, we, we were just all constantly hanging out on set, we were our, always like in somebody's trailer listening to music or playing games or watching something, um, we, were, we were always cracking up like in between takes, like it was just a genuine bond there and I'm an only child and you know, especially like the only children on set we we all said you know we felt like we walked away with a family like these are these are our siblings now like we really we really um i don't know we have a special bond that um was truly magical to create on set mm -hmm. well also this series takes place in the 90s which I believe was before you were even born. Yep. So you can't necessarily say that like you lived through this era and you could call back on those experiences by any means. But how much did you, I mean, did you do research to sort of uh, take into account the time period of when you were playing Pearl, just how she interacts with the world? Yeah, no, I definitely did. I mean, I what I did was I listened to a bunch of 90s music. So I listened to all of the top 100, well, not all of them, because that's a lot of them. <laughs> well, like at least like the top 10 songs that um, <laughs> were, you know, constantly being played in 97. I listened to a bunch of songs, um, you know, just 97 and before things that I thought that, you know, Mia would have introduced Pearl to at a young age, um, things that she would have listened to with Lexi, things that she would have listened to when she's hanging out with Moody or just things that she even like hears like at pep rallies, like songs that they're playing at pep rallies or at the school dance. Um, so I made a playlist full of songs um, that, you know, kind of helped me get in get in the mood for uh, for the 90s vibe. And so I listened to that um, every day heading to work and every day in my trailer. Um, I still have the playlist and I listen to it sometimes because I think it's a pretty darn good playlist. And it helps me <laughs> get in the 90s vibe when I'm like feeling really just like in my old school element um <laughs> but yeah and we also it was kind of funny because miss reese actually she played a game with us that and we filmed it and it was like this it was this thing where because we have a bunch of there there were a bunch of like dvds or uh, is that what they're called they're they're called D, were they called yeah. dvd 90s uh vhs or dvd yeah we, so we had they were a bunch of those in uh, the Richardson house and so basically Miss Reese she tested all of us um so she would like pick out a random VHS or DVD and she would basically ask us what the plot of the movie was um who stars in it and all of us had no clue what any of those movies were we also had no clue what real world was mm -hmm. we also had no clue what before sunrise was Ooh. so we had 
go back and watch all of those <laughs> movies and shows, but it was really fun to do research on the 90s. I'm feeling very old right now, but <laughs> 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 anyway, um, well, because this is a limited series, that meant that you had to obviously say goodbye to this character in this world after eight episodes, which must have been tough, but uh, <laughs> just having done this project, what have you taken away from it and i'm not I'm, I'm talking even beyond just the relationships that you form just working with this material this story is there anything you feel like you've learned just in helping to tell this story i think the biggest lesson that i walked away with was this, this is a story about facades hmm. Facades everywhere is a story about facades and i think that we can't get so wrapped up in just these facades that are constantly around us, whether that's on social media, that's on our TV screen, that's, and, you know, just our everyday life. And so I kind of, I walked away with, I mean, kind of corny to say, but don't judge a book by its cover um, because, you know, everything seems perfect at first glance. And you think that, you know, somebody has their life together and that, you know, they're basically like living this ideal life, but when you go beneath the surface, um, they're just struggling to stay afloat, just like everybody else. Um, you know, when you see these celebrities or you see um, just like these social media influencers, you know, you think that, wow, their life is so perfect. I wish I had their life. But in the end, I mean, they're just like us. Um, so I think that that's, you know, the biggest thing um, or lesson that I walked away with from the story. Um, but also something else that I walked away with was to dream big, lean into every project and how to truly embody a character. The process of creating Pearl was like none other. I've never done anything like it before. And um, it truly helps me grow as an actor. And so for this project, I am forever grateful. Very, very cool. Well, I look forward to seeing more from you in the future. If, you, if it's anything like this, then <laughs> very much looking forward to it. But yeah. I want to thank you so much for talking to us today, Lexi. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And for those watching, hit like and subscribe for more Emmy season interviews and head to goldderby.com to make your predictions. Thanks again.